every believer, you know we serve an awesome God, a God who's in control. Put your hands on it right here and lift up your worship to him. That's it. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Say my God reigns, our God reigns, Lord you reign above every name. My God reigns, our God reigns, Lord you reign above every name. Oh. With power and majesty, dominion, authority, he reigns. Come on, lift it up with me. With power and majesty, so bring me on authority, you reign. So my God reigns, our God reigns.
Well, praise God for you. Thank you so much for tuning in today to Mount Zion Church, Nashville. I'm so grateful to have you. I'm Bishop Joseph Juan Walker III, and we thank God for you. Mount Zion Church here in Nashville welcomes you wherever you're watching around the world. This is our Bible study time, and we're excited to have you, and I hope you'll follow us, share with us. We love to connect. My wife and I both, we would love to know who you are and connect. Follow us on social media. I'm Joseph Walker III. She's Dr. Steph Walker. We can't wait to connect with you. We are grateful to God for all of you and thank all of you. This series has been such a blessing. We've had so many folks comment on it. This Kingdom Culture series, we're gonna conclude it today. I promise you, you don't wanna miss out on what God is going to do. So stay tuned right where you are. I promise it's going to bless you. Now we're gonna give right now. We love to give here at Mount Zion because we understand our spiritual responsibility to sowing and reaping and God is awesome. And you can text the gift right now. Do that while you're watching. We ask you to invest in the kingdom work. And secondly, we hope if you can't do that, you can mail it in, mail it in to Mount Zion Church, Nashville. There you are, 7594 Old Hickory Boulevard, White's Creek, Tennessee. So we're thankful to God for you and hope that you will join us in this giving period. Let's pray. Father, thank you right now for your word. We pray, God, that this word will speak to us. We give your name the glory and praise for kingdom, culture, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's get right to it today. This is Kingdom Culture, part four. We're talking about kingdom favor. Now, this is something, y'all, we cannot take for granted because favor is something that when you walk in kingdom, God just does it, man. In Proverbs 8, 20, 35, for whoever finds me finds life, listen, and obtains favor from the Lord. I remember someone telling me one time, Bishop, why are you talking about favor so much? You know, people need to not know about favor. Teach them how to walk in righteousness. I want you to understand something, that favor is a direct response of righteousness. Favor doesn't just come because somebody says favor is coming in your life. It's because you've been taught how to walk in the principles we've talked about for the last three weeks, about discipline and what it means to walk in this dominion and kingdom economics. And what does it mean to have wise decisions being made? That's when you release favor over your life. God's favor is the power, man that changes things for our lives. You don't have to wait for it to experience the fullness of God's favor. It comes. But you understand that when you were saved, you tapped and you were born again, God gave us favor. While we were rebelling against God, God still showed us favor. And many times, sadly, many of us never received the favor of God because we think that we're waiting on God when actually God it's waiting on us. You see, God is always searching for someone to bless. It's just his nature. He's a blessing God, full of mercy, full of compassion. And God is looking for someone who's ready to trust him. Is that you? Someone who's ready to reach out in faith to receive favor and blessings over their life. And are you that kind of person? <laughs> are you willing and ready to receive the favor and blessing of God upon your life? Do you understand what real favor is? Well, by definition, favor is the word best described as delight. God delights in us. You know, it's powerful, right? God, it's like a gratuitous endowment. It's like God giving us something, right, that we absolutely don't deserve. When you think of favor, you refer to tangible things in your life. Yet God's desire to show favor is manifested in connection and protection. See, there is a, there's also a close association among favor, grace, and mercy, which are sometimes used to translate the same Hebrew and Greek words. But the favor that we experience as human beings depends on God's good pleasure being extended to us. For example, those who walk blameless, such as Noah or Moses, receive favor and honor from God. Gabriel told Mary that she had found favor with God and would bear the child named Christ. At age 12, Jesus enjoyed the favor of God as men would say that he grew in wisdom and stature. So there are five truths about favor, and I want, I want you to hear them. I want you to write these down. There are five truths. 
Okay? Here they are. Number one, God's favor is God's grace. <laughs> Let that sink in. It is a gift often taken for granted as if we deserve it. But man, God's favor is God's grace. Imagine if God took it away. What would your life look like? So Ephesians 2 and 8 says, For by grace have you been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is a what? Gift from God. So grace is favor for me. God, if you don't do nothing else, you save me by grace. That's favor, man. I didn't deserve it, but you gave it to me. But then watch this. God's favor, listen carefully, number two, can affect every area of your life. See, God's favor takes care of everything that we need in spirit, mind, soul, body. Ephesians 2 and 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Wow. Every area of my life, every area of my life, favor impacts every, not, not one dimension, but every area. Number three, God shows favor before we were even born. Romans 5 and 8 says, but God demonstrated his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Before you accepted Jesus Christ, you can testify that in hindsight, it's 2020. But, but there were times that God showed you favor when you don't even know it was God. Things went the other way that were designed to come your way. Doors opened up, and you're like, where'd that happen? How'd that happen? Favor. Jobs you got, you weren't qualified for. Accepted in the programs you didn't even have the grades for. Life, when it seemed like death was knocking at the door, you're still living. We can look back and see the favor of God. Sometimes that just causes me just to want to just give him praise right now. God's favor is continual, man. It's continual. It's continual. Man's favor is fickle. God's favor is forever. God's favor surrounds us constantly. And then God's favor must be accepted. Listen, because before you can receive all of God's benefit, you have to know that they're yours. You got to receive favor by faith. I got to believe it. I got to walk in it. I got to receive it by faith. Look at 2 Peter 1, 2 and 3. Look at this real quick. Watch it. It's going to bless you. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and, our G and, and Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Watch it. Through the knowledge of him. This is incredibly, it's incredibly important. Who called us by glory and virtue. Right? Who called us by glory and virtue. So, so how is this favor obtained? How do I get it? <laughs> Glad you asked. Humility. You'll never get favor. God will never let favor come on an arrogant person. First Peter 5 and 5, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. Be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. When I humble myself and I seek God's will for my life, don't get the big head. That's when I know I'm doing it right. Proverbs 22 and 1 says, A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. Loving favor rather than silver and gold. I, I, favor is better than money. Favor starts getting you stuff that's on sale that's not even on sale. Favor. Man, honor God's favor above anyone or anything, including your own stuff. Number two is faith. Faith. Proverbs eleven twenty seven. 27. He who earnestly seeks good finds favor, but trouble will come to him who seeks evil. I got to have the faith to seek. I got to believe that it exists. I'm after favor, man. Number three is obedience. Proverbs 12 and 2. A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of wicked intentions, look at this, he will condemn. So when I obey God, man, I will find favor. If my heart is right, when I don't let people pull me down to their schemes and games, and I walk in obedience, man, I find favor. There are some people that look at you and wonder, 
Why are things always happening good for them? It's because you chose to do right by people. See, what is a life without favor, man? I can't imagine it, but what is it? Well, disobedience and sin will always cause favor to be denied. Whenever you are disobedient, whenever you, whenever you willfully sin against God, you, you de deny favor. Favor wants to come, but it ain't going to come because you, you're constantly doing what is contrary to what God says. Jeremiah 16, 10 through 13, and it shall be that when you show this people all these words and they say to you, why has the Lord pronounced all these great disasters against us? Or what is our iniquity? Or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? Then you shall say to them, because your fathers have forsaken me, says the Lord, they have walked after other gods and have served them and worshiped them and have forsaken me and not kept my law and you have done worse than your fathers for behold each one follows the dictates of his own evil heart so that no one listens to me therefore I will cast you out of this land into a land that you do not know neither you nor your fathers and there you shall serve other gods day and night where I will not show you favor my God, is it worth it? Is disobedience worth it? Is sin worth that? He says, man, people are going to ask, why is this happening to me? Because of your iniquities. Proverbs 21 and 10, let this sink in. The soul of the wicked desires evil. His neighbor finds no favor in his eyes. People look at you and say, man, I see why your life is going down the drain because you disobedient. This is a time to reflect over your life and your decisions, man, and say, Lord, let me walk in righteousness because there was a direct correlation between the favor of God and obedience. See, those who lack understanding of God's ways lack favor too. You don't know how God is moving. Isaiah speaks of restoration of Israel and addresses those who have no understanding. In Isaiah 27, 11, listen to this. When its bowls are withered, they will be broken off. The women come and set them on fire, for it is a people of no understanding. Therefore, he who made them will not have mercy on them, and he who formed them will show them no favor. See, here's the deal. I got to understand kingdom success here. Webster, Webster defines it like this. Success is favorable. In other words, success is an act of kindness. <laughs> something given as a token of love. Apostle Paul put it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10. But by grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. And yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Boy, the apostle is telling us that he is an expression of God's favor when it comes to success. I am what I am because of the grace or the favor of God. When I look at my life, I'm just a little boy from Shreveport, Louisiana, man. I grew up on the street with no sidewalk but ditches. I grew up, man, not even knowing what was possible. I had some sense because I had great parents who were always pushing me and letting me know, but man, I look at where I am now and say, man, this ain't nothing but the favor of God, man. God's favor will deliver you from, 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 from those things that, that don't belong to you, man. Those things that are attached to you that try to bring down your value and your destiny. God's favor will always detach you from that. Psalm 44. Let's look at that. Verse 3. For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arm save them. But it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because God, you favored them. See, God allowed you to win the battle. God allowed you to pass that test. It was God who allowed you to get that job or to get that increase or to get that raise or that promotion. That's favor on your life. And see, Joseph was successful because of the favor of God, man. It's important, right? Esther was successful because she was favored. Daniel had favor on his life. Jesus Christ 
was a true example of the favor of his father on his life. Luke 2 and 40 says, And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom. Grace of God was upon him. That word grace and favor are being used interchangeably, right? That's how favor works. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, watch it, and in favor with God and man. Can I talk to you for a minute about that? When favor's in your life, you have favor with God, but God also gives you favor with human relationships. People invite you into spaces and rooms that you never would have imagined. You're sitting in opportunities and people are drawn to the anointing of your life, are drawn to the favor in your life, and you're sitting at tables like I've been at tables before saying, Lord, why in the world am I here? How did I get to this place? And God's like, because favor. See? And, and when you have that kind of favor in your life, it comes with a price tag. You better be clear about that. It ain't free, but earn. And let me tell you something, man. This is going to bless you. Psalm 5 and 12. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, and you'll surround him with the shield. Because, Lord, I know I need some protection. Because in this kind of favor on your life, you're going to trouble some people. The enemy hates to see you walk in favor. The enemy hates to see you walk in this level of blessing. The enemy hates to see this happen in your life. But as a child of God, man, you got to believe. And it can be very clear. That's a price tag for righteousness. Righteousness is doing the right thing. Righteousness says, I agree with the finished work of Calvary. So I choose to walk in righteousness. And righteousness is what stimulates favor in my life. What I do right by God, it stimulates favor in my life. There are four things that stimulate divine favor. Write these down. Number one, here they are. Righteousness. Say this with me. Righteousness stimulates the favor of God in my life. <laughs> no good thing would he withhold from those who walk upright. When I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all those things will be added unto me. That's, that's it. See, man, it's your heritage from God. Joseph was righteous. Joseph chose to reject part of his wife. He walked in righteousness, and as a result, he was elevated because of his right, the favor of God. When favor is on you, man, you just choose to walk in righteousness. The right knowledge of God also helps you with this. 2 Peter 1 and 2, grace and peace be multiplied to you, and the knowledge of God and our Lord saved Jesus Christ, the Lord and saved Jesus Christ. It's having the right understanding of who God is in my life. Notice, 2 Peter says, grace and peace be multiplied, be multiplied through the knowledge of our Lord and Jesus Christ. See, one of the avenues that a favor and grace in our lives is through the knowledge of God, the right knowledge of God, not erroneous knowledge, but the right knowledge, not religious knowledge, but relationship knowledge, the true knowledge. It's our breakthrough of understanding the word of God is where our breakthroughs occur, man. And then watch this, kingdom addiction. When I'm addicted to the kingdom of God, I'm not addicted to church, I'm addicted to kingdom. That's the difference. See, as kingdom citizens, we honor God by practicing kingdom principles, applying kingdom wisdom and living in the kingdom because I'm addicted to those things. God provokes favor over my life, man. In Psalm 102 and 14, for your servant takes pleasure in her stones and show favor to her dust. I'm addicted to kingdom. The reason why I'm teaching on kingdom culture, y'all, because I'm just, I'm just so addicted. I want our church to be addicted to kingdom. I want us to live in this space because when you're addicted to the kingdom of God, you compel God to favor you. And Lord, everything I do, I want to do it for kingdom, not for me, not for, I want, to, I want to advance your kingdom in the earth. And when I seek first the kingdom of God, man, God promises all these things to be added unto me, man. My welfare, my family, my life, my community, everything gets better when I chase out the kingdom. And then number four, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In Psalm 20 and 6, now I know the Lord saves his anointing. He will answer from his holy heaven the saving strength of his right hand. I know the Lord saves his anointed. That's, that's when I know favor is on me. That, that's when I know I've been in situations and it was the anointing of the Spirit of God, man, that God, God was attracted to that anointing. God said, I'm not going to let my child go out like that. I'm not going to let this attack take my child out. here. the anointing of the Holy Spirit carries supernatural favor. 
The anointing attracts favor. The anointing makes you to smell like favor. <laughs> it causes favor to flow your way. Stuff starts finding you. When you walk in that level of anointing, all you got to do is walk in obedience. Anointing makes you, you know, enjoy unusual affection from people. It, it makes your enemies bless you. <laughs> That's the kind of favor God has in your life. And the world is confused by your favor because they don't understand it. You walk in the space and people scratch their head and say, I just don't understand why. I don't understand how. I've been hearing that for years. But you know what? I've just accepted it. It's the favor of God on my life. See, when you walk in righteousness, there, there is a fundamental principle I want you to get here. When you walk in righteousness and you pursue the things of God, kingdom favor will be upon your life. That's so much that God wants to do in this season in your life and all this stuff is tied in together. Think about it for a moment. Watch how this works. There is kingdom dominion. We talked about it, right? Walking in authority, knowing who I am. So I'm not going to be subjected to the enemy's plot over my life. I understand my kingdom rights and my position. As a consequence, how I handle my money, kingdom economics, I sow to the kingdom, I give to my church, I make sure I tithe, I do all the things, and I save my money, and I invest in the future, and I take care of my... I, I'm a kingdom economist. Authority, economy. See how this works out? And then my decisions are wisdom. Now, I got my authority, my money straight, I'm making wise decisions. Woo! I'm seeking God first and all of my things I'm doing, I'm saying, Lord, what would you have me to do? Let me just walk into this space making wise decisions. And now, I did that, I did that, I did that, walking in decisions of wisdom and righteousness. And then God does the rest. He puts favor on all my decisions. So favor is on my dominion which means now I'm going into spaces with authority I never imagined. Favor is on my money. Now, I start attracting resources from places I never really imagined. Favor is on my wisdom, on my decisions, because now not only am I making the right decisions, like Solomon, I'm telling God, give me what, and God giving me what I didn't even ask for. I'm praying for stuff, and God's giving me what I didn't even pray for, because I got wisdom, and I got favor working together. People of God, that's what favor looks like. It's not turning around three times and it falls out the sky. It's about walking in righteousness. This entire series was about developing a culture. It was about a mindset. I wanted to labor over this as God placed it in my heart for you because I want us in this season to know we are a part of a different kingdom. With all that's happening in the world system today, y'all, never before have we seen it like this. But right now, this teaching hit you, listen, in the eighth month of 2020, in new beginnings, because God wanted you to have a new mindset of what culture looks like. I pray you were blessed by it. I pray it spoke to your life. And I pray we will shift from the world system to a kingdom mentality. And I pray that every lesson will manifest in your life. You may be watching today and you say, Bishop, thank you for this word. I tell you, thank God. Because God knew exactly what you needed in this moment to help you get things where you needed them to be. I want you to know the greatest decision you could ever make, the wisest decision you could ever make, is to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. He loves you. I'm able to give your life back to him. I'm able to say, Pastor, I need to get in a closer relationship with him. I want you to know right now he loves you and he cares. I want you right now, if you want to be a part of our ministry, I'd love to be your pastor. I want you to email me right now, salvation at mtzionnashville.org. Do it now. I want to connect with you. I want you to know right now that God has great plans for your life. I thank God for you today, and I want you to know how much I appreciate you, 
how much I love you. Yo, let's get this right. And we walk in this authority. We can take authority over every demonic force that comes in our lives. We walk in this kingdom economy. Man, we could not only pay, pay this church off, we could be such a debt-free man, so we could, y'all, you know, let's just be who God called us to be and make wise decisions and let's attract the favor of God. Blessings and favor are all right with me. I thank God they're all right with you too. Thank you for watching. I pray you've been blessed. May the Lord keep you and may the Lord make his face shine upon you. And may you be a person walking in kingdom culture. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you were blessed by today's Bible study. You know, we're very excited to bring this word into your life, particularly in this season where all of us are social distancing and attempting to uh, abide by what the CDC is asking us to do. But the word of God is so important in all of our lives. And what I want you to do is I want you to let me know if this message has blessed you. Stay connected with me at Joseph Walker 3 on Instagram, my wife, Dr. Steph Walker. We love to connect with you. And also, you have an opportunity right now to give haven't done that, please sow into what God is blessing you with. We want to be able to continue to reach more souls for Jesus Christ. You help us do that. Right here is the text to give information. Thank you so much for watching it and we can't wait to share another word with you.